so victoria congratulations for come find me thank, thank you, you so much this is a uh, one uh, touching emotional uh, type of story so i have to ask each of you uh what initially attracted you to a you know to a project like this so let me start with soul first uh well dan i auditioned for dan in 2011 for his first feature, Jack, Jules, Esther, and Me, which will be on VOD January 24th, I believe. Sorry for the promotion. <laughs> and uh, that was cheap. That was very cheap. But anyways, um, yeah, I played the mother of the lead, uh, this wonderful actor, Alex John. Uh, and... Um, at the end, you know, when we wrapped, he was like, I want to work with you again. And uh, I am I want to write something for you. And I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> the business. Uh, but at the same time, it was very flattering because I always felt that he was so honest and straightforward. So, but he did, you know, um, Six years later, April 2017, I get an email from him with this, what is the second part of the film, because it was supposed to be a short, right? And then he expanded and then wrote the daughter's POV as the first part, uh, and uh, which I feel it was necessary um, after meeting and working with Victoria. So yeah, yeah. Um, did that answer the question? You mean why you wanted to do this movie? <laughs> yes. Uh, and, oh, the, the script. Yes. So when he emailed me the script, 2017, uh, it just floored me. It just floored me. Um, he did it. He promised this. He didn't have to execute the promise, but he did it. And um, I was like, yeah, let's do this. And I was very moved at, you know, after reading it from one, you know, just one sitting. And yeah, so I said yes. Terrific. And Victoria, what about for you? Because uh, because I, I think this was a, something different that I, I, I'm used to, like, watching you play a detective or a cop. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so why did you want to do something like this? Because of the the love in the film, a story about a mother and a daughter, a, a Latino story, and the fact that we shot the second part of the movie in 2017. And then Daniel came to me and said, I'd like to write more for your character. And that was just a no brainer. I just experienced working with Daniel and with Soul and seeing the way that they interacted with each other. Um, and watching their process, I very much wanted to continue to tell that story. I mean, this uh, film, Come Find Me, it almost feels like two different type of movies, which, because of the two halves, you know, um, with Victoria, you know, the first half and Soul with the second half, did did you both approach this sort of like the same movie, or do you, do you both looked at it like two separate type of uh, projects? Hmm. Who wants to answer that? Go ahead, Vic. Do you have, do you... I, I think I just approached it as the same story, the same film, but just different uh, times in their lives. That That's mm -hmm. just the way that I saw it. It's just like in real life, you know, this is, it's a wedding and then you see how her she is in she, her career. So you're sometimes different when you're with your friends and family or different at work. So I just sort of, we're always like switching it, right? How you act at work is different. So that's, that's how I approached it. She was, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's it. Yeah, you're you're on it. Uh, you know, you, you stay in the moment, and um, yeah, it 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 felt. It didn't felt. Oops, sorry about my dog. I just like your cat. Looks like a snow panther. Uh, <laughs> beautiful. Um, so this is Fernando. He's Fernando. from Mexico. He was rescued from Mexico. Hi, Fernando. Say hi. Sorry. Um, you know, yeah. Um, I must say that it felt going back. This happened in a span of two years. 
So mm -hmm. 2017 and then 2019, when, of course, in 2019, Victoria is, you know, number one in the call sheet. I'm like, what, number three? Of, <laughs> number three. And but when I came in to do a couple of scenes I have with her, um, I had with her, I felt like time did not go by. Mm -hmm. It just felt like it was just, we had taken a very small break and, you know, maybe a weekend and we went back to work. That's mm -hmm. how it actually felt to me. Mm -hmm. uh, but this time we are to serve Victoria's story, you know, mm -hmm. her point of view. Yeah, yeah, it felt really easy. So, so both of your chemistry started off strong all the way at the beginning and lasted for all those couple of years. Wow, that's a that's a pretty strong chemistry between. Yeah, them. I mean, we're busy mothers, and 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 uh, Vicky has a very a busier acting career than mine, uh, and and uh, I just feel like you know there's no time to hang out, right? And then of course we had COVID, but um, yeah, it just it just felt easy very much from the beginning when we were shooting, you know, in 2017. Yeah. So, you know, we were, we've been sharing all day how many synchronicities we share, you know, Vicky's name is Victoria Luz. My mother is Ilda Luz. Both our dads are Victor. The dad in the movie is Victor. Um, my godmothers gloria and dan didn't know any of this so that started you know <laughs> we started just connecting and connecting and connecting it's like oh yeah it was like we we didn't have time to, to really get to know each other we had three weeks like 12 hour maybe plus days and so it was just we joke that it's like we have this twin connection that we just fell into it almost like we'd known each other for a long time yeah i mean this is this is an ultra low budget, right? That looks like a million dollars. I mean, it's so beautifully uh, lit by our DP, Colin Brazy. Um, and and uh, the ideas, visual structures that Daniel wanted to, to convey. Um, and it seemed so easy, yet it, it is fast paced. You know, there's no time you know, to relax. It's just like 12 hour days each, right? Eight, nine days mm -hmm. for each um, point of view. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, sim similar to both of your lives, um, I, I can imagine how busy your lives are. I, I find the, the, don't you find this story like very relatable to, uh, you know, Latina, working Latinas everywhere? where they're um, now these days, especially in this um, rat race world that a lot of people, you know, you're trying to balance your your family and an obsession of work at the same time. Mm -hmm. yeah, it ahead, takes a village. I mean, it takes a village. While, while we were shooting 2019, my girls were only nine at the time. And, and thank God for my dad who came down here because we shot from like, I think 2 p.m. to 2 a.m. every single day for that eight nine days mm -hmm. and so i i couldn't have have done it without without his help so yeah mm -hmm. no absolutely uh it takes a village uh friends help um i um yeah you know um I, th I think the, the 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 desire to to be a part of something that you know is important and moving and in intelligent and that you know you're gonna touch people's lives who however many you know um you jump in you know you you know you have to do it and and all of a sudden when you commit mm -hmm. when the intentions are there I really do believe that when you commit, all of the resources come to assist you. It's like the universe conspires, right? Yeah. Now, I, I want to address, uh, both of your characters have a um, 
for your hats have a unique, um, I want to say, point of view where Vic Victoria, your character had conversations um, or or saw things that weren't really there. Mm -hmm. And then so it seems like you were living through a Groundhog Day type of uh, situation. Um, could you talk about um, doing those type of scenes? Because that's a lot different from, you know, a lot of other type of dramas. Um, go ahead, Victoria. Um, I just remember, you know, when I'm working, I just try to understand my character, not try to see the similarities so that I can play, because sometimes I play really different characters for myself. And in this instance, I do it all the time. I'm constantly doing another conversation. Like I've already had the conversation. I don't know. I, maybe this started when I was a kid in front of the mirror and I'm having the conversation again, how I wished I'd had it. Mm -hmm. And so um, as far as shooting it, you know, if there was ever any confusion, I mean, Daniel was right there, right involved to let us know what exactly was happening, what happened before, because it was not linear. So, you know, I trusted Daniel and I had a great coach there sort of helping me through those scenes. Wow. And what about for you, Sol? I mean, I, I, I figured doing something like very repetitive and different over and over again. But... I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. Um, and listen, I, I, I will cry um, while watching a commercial, right? Something as simple as that in storytelling, but I, when I used to do long time ago before the kids theater, I usually was in the more kind of avant-garde type of theater, very physical. So this kind of uh, approach to nonlinear and, um, you know, very almost staccato like, um, visuals um i i loved it because for me that's for as an actor trying to tell the story help the director and the crew um it's a challenge for me it's a challenge for me to to make it as understandable and accessible for the audience hopefully it is my hope right um and also the, um, I don't know, I, I, just even physically, the fact that we had to deal, you know, I had to deal with a groundhog day type of thing. Um, other people were calling it, uh, another um, critic was calling it like um, in one of the film festivals, like a fugue, right? Um, you have specific number of notes and then you have all of these variations um happening from that and and yeah I, it just makes sense when you are going through a crisis when you are so um when you're in pain and 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 trying to make sense of things it doesn't come in a sequential you know a to Z manner. So for me was, I I really loved it. Um, I love the challenge. And yes, by the end of my shoot, the last couple of days, I have to say it was rough. It was rough when you have monologues during the rehearsal dinner that are so similar, but they are, you know, yeah, these tweaks and 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 changes, minor changes. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, it was hard. Um, but you know, Dan was there, the entire crew. I mean, everybody was so supportive and and also moved because that's your audience. You are playing to them, and when you have a crew that, you know, for both both tellings of of the film, both parts that they they would be crying as well, you know? So when you have a crew that is so connected and committed, it's like, you don't mind doing it over and over again, you know? 
Um, ahead, I, I just needed to add, as I felt like I was an audience member when she was those monologues, because I didn't have any lines in those scenes. She, it, she made it look easy, but she had to do three different kind of nuanced monologues. They weren't separated by days. They were back to back to back before lunch, and then we'd come back and do it again. And then a lot of people don't know this, but we did that in the summer. And then we had to do reshoots back in December of that same scene. And she did it again. And as an actor watching that, it's hard to do. I mean, maybe one, two takes, you cry, whatever, but to do it over and over again. And she says the crew was crying. You have to make them feel that, you know, and and she did it. And I, I never got to pick your brain because you were in it. I didn't want to bother you, but I am this weekend. I'm going to ask how you do that. Because sometimes you're like, they ask you to do like for the 10th time, you're just like trying to stab your eye and just kind of <laughs> 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 Wow, let's have a very good idea for some other shoot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, you know I, I don't know. I don't know. It happens. I think is um, I am in an eternal angst <laughs> 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 to prove something, you know, and and then it happens. You know, I think it's... For me, it's 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 very weird. It's 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 the character is whatever is going on in the journey, but also there's the third eye because I really believe. I'm sorry, you gotta you're seeing yourself too. Mm -hmm. um, there there is an awareness out there where you are. There, I don't know, or maybe I'm split personality. I don't know, <laughs> but I really believe that each actor is here within and there's also a third eye an awareness right so otherwise can you imagine i mean we could get into an accident if we're completely like right uh taken by the moment you have to be aware of where the mark is on the floor of the lighting so of course there has to be a complete awareness so i just within that awareness outside looking in i i'm, I'm also saying you know come on you know yeah. the coach telling you you know you got to you got to do this um so that's what i experienced that takes me to that to that step but it doesn't work like that all the time there are times that i'm just like like daniel and i just finished a short and um yeah there were days that i was like there were hours in the day that I was telling Daniel, man, I'm dry. There's no more water in my body. <laughs> There's nothing. There's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, most excellent. Well, I re really do appreciate this uh, conversation. And I could tell as an indie film like this, this was a very challenging project for both of you. But it is a wonderful talk um, with me. And hopefully we get to do this again. Thank you very much. Yes, yes, yes. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you.